So what I've got to do now is find somewhere to mount the number plate. Uh, there's a couple of options. Uh, I could mount it, you know, down here or on an angle. Um, you know, basically using these bolts here, or I could put it up here and make a plate. I was originally just going to make a plate and having it sit up here and use the bolt that holds the light on to mount that plate. Um, but I think what I want to do is use the same uh, round bar or round stock that I used when I made the actual um, luggage rack and create something that comes off here. This is not a new concept, this has been done many times, but I want to come up with my own design, something that comes off that shock and the axle and just bring it out on one side and then just wrap it around and mount the number plate to that. I think that's how I'm going to do it. Um, but yeah, let's get creating and see what we can come up with. So the idea of this bracket was to actually install the number plate on the end and have it so it curves around this actual hoop. Um, and I kind of got the number plate and bent it and sat it on there and I just, I think that, I think it looks silly having it curved like that. Not to mention it's probably not legal to have your number plate bent or curved. So I decided to move away from this idea uh, <laughs> for a couple of reasons, like I said, one, because it, I don't think it looks any good and two, well, I don't think it's legal. So I'm not entirely sold on this whole, uh, this idea of having this sitting up here on this build. I don't think it, it, it could suit it if I play around with it a bit. Um, but what I've come up with is slightly different because the muffler is going on this side, obviously it's gonna be up on an angle. Uh, it's just sitting there at the moment. I've got a little bit of room under it where I know my legs are not gonna catch or nothing's gonna really hit it because the, you know, obviously the muffler's sitting on that side. so. You've got a little bit of room out here. So what I'm thinking about doing is putting the number plate in here. As close to the actual wheel as I can get, obviously within reason, um, and just mount it. Like cut this here and here, and then obviously put the number plate in there like that, facing you know wherever it sits on whatever angle. I think that will look better uh, than what it looks like right now. I guess it doesn't look too bad, but I just have a different idea on... Uh, the way I want it to sit and the way I want it to look, considering it's already got this rack up here. Uh, it's already got a mud guard. I could just potentially make another bracket that just holds the number plate here, which would look perfectly fine, but I just thought I'd come up with something cool uh, around this area, which is literally just two bolts to take it off. And if I want to make another bracket up here and put the number plate up here, if I think that's going to look better, then it's literally just one bolt to take it off. So no big drama, just a bit of uh, playing around, see how it turns out. sort of fabrication like this like sheet metal and you want to try and get these two perfectly level so you can put a tack on them 
uh, something that I use which I think you'll find very handy rather than putting a clamp on it which you can do you could possibly use a clamp like this and have them pretty much you know stuck together I think an easy way to do it is using these guys they're actually magnets they're stitch weld magnets Eastwood sell them basically they're super strong uh, and you just put them wherever you want them obviously you can put them uh, here and here put a stitch there and then just work your way around they come in a set of eight uh, and that's what they're called basically just to give you an indication of how strong they actually are here's a bit of six mil MDF and there's just a bit of steel underneath it so like you know they are re relatively strong for what they are and they're just handy for stuff like this. Just to let you know with the actual belts that I use on this machine, um, I start with sometimes a 40 grit and then I go to a 60 or a 120. Uh, it all depends on what I'm working on. If I really want to rough it down and you know take off a lot of material, I usually go to a 40 or a 60. But I also use this stuff. This is like a, I guess like a scotch bright. It's a little bit harder than scotch bright and it will really clean up that metal. It doesn't take much material off, but it just shines it up and cleans it up well. So if I'm going to TIG something, uh, I'll use this to just to clean up the metal, obviously, so that it's nice and clean for TIGging. But also, uh, if I just want something to be, you know, smooth, I'll use it and around the edges. So it's just a handy little thing to have. So what I'm going to do now is drill some holes into these backing plates. But rather than just have a standard hole, I'm going to flare them out uh, just like this. And how I'm going to do it is I've got these really cool tools from uh, Eastwood again and they're called punch flare dies and clearly they just do exactly that. There's a sharp edge and then there's a rounded edge. So how to use them is drill a hole, 13 mil or a half inch hole and then pretty much put them together. Just nip it up till it's tight and then use your spanner or a ratchet or even a drill. I think I'll use a drill on this and then just tighten that up and it will just punch the hole and flare it all in one go. I'll do it now just to show you. So as you can see, it leaves you a perfect flared hole every single time. Uh, it was a little bit tight to get out, uh, just purely because, oh, it might be because it's new, I guess, I'm not sure. But a bit of a tap with the hammer and she comes out, so I'm not too worried. Uh, there's a little bit of a sharp edge just on one side. So I'm gonna use this deburrer here and just you know clean it up. Um, not really going to worry about this, but if it happens on the actual piece that I'm working on, then that's what I'll do to clean it up. Uh, what I think I'll do is I'll do a one and a half inch in the center and then just do a one inch on either side. Just like I said, for no other reason, but because I can and I just want to play with these things. I think they're kind of cool.
So that actually worked out pretty cool. I've still got to drill the small little holes to mount the actual uh, number plate, but yeah, I'm stoked with that. I think it looks good. Just keep in mind if you do do smaller pieces like this with the punch flared eyes, uh, it will bow uh, just because it is a smaller piece. I'm sure it wouldn't have that much effect on it if it was a big, large piece of steel. Um, but no drama, can easily straighten that out. Just in case you do decide to get these punch flared eyes, I'll leave a product page link in the description below so you know where to get them. So with this one, uh, I went a little bit far with the grinder. So what I'll do is I'll just tack that with the welder and then just grind it flush. So if you're interested in getting yourself a whole bunch of scrap uh, to use in various projects on your bike, how I acquired all this stuff was a lot of this stuff just cost me about $15. And how I did it was rather than going to the steel supplier, I went to a fence and gate manufacturer and they have just like heaps of offcuts. Like this sort of stuff is kind of, you know, useless to them because they can't really use it unless it's a full length and they're not going to join it. So it just goes in the scrap bin to them. And like I said, I filled up a cart and it cost me $15 for, you know, just all sorts of various sizes. So, you know, flat bar, round bar, different thicknesses. So yeah, if you have a, a trailer builder or a manufacturer or a fence or anything like that that deals with a lot of steel, go and check them out. Go and ask them if they've got off cuts because you can get yourself a bargain like this and have yourself a whole bunch of different sizes, which is really helpful for doing this sort of stuff. So for this plate here, I've just pretty much put uh, rivets in there just to 
you know, just keep it in place. I still need to get some countersunk bolts uh, that are going to be small enough and a nylock nut on the back. So four of those to mount that guy. This guy has been mounted with uh, just two bolts, which I need to pretty much trim them. They're just a little bit too long. So that's pretty much one, two, and three ways to mount a license plate to a motorcycle. Uh, this guy here is probably my favorite, the traditional style, just for this build because I think it just suits it. But let me know your thoughts, which one you prefer on this build, or which one you prefer on your bike actually. Which one do you like out of all three of those? So just keep in mind if you want to do something like this. Uh, I've used two of the existing bolts, I haven't welded anything on. Uh, this bolt here is obviously to hold the bottom of the shock and the axle. Um, you know, most motorcycles are going to have that, especially of this era, unless you've converted it to a mono shock. And if you've done that, then you may have to find something else. But, you know, there's also the CXs have this, uh, I guess, breather bolt where you can pro probably use that as well. That would work. Uh, I just find that that's going to be nice and neat just having them come up like that. But if you've got a chain driven bike, you know, similar to this, then I guess you could still use, you know, these two points. Or alternatively, you could make a tab and just weld a tab on. This is the tab for the actual chain guard. Uh, if you wanted to, you know, just weld a little tab somewhere, that's also something you can do and just have a single wrap around like the one that I built. 